to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. I write these things unto you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not just teach, to do. They must hear and they must see. They must hear and they must see. You hear that Jesus is Lord, then you see that he is Lord. You hear that he is healer, then you see that he is healer. You hear that he is lifter, then you see that he is lifter. Everything God said, he saw. He said, that is the formula. If it does not work like that, he is not there. It is saying and seeing that proves that he's alive. Not just saying. He says, when I came to you, listen, that I did not just come with the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power, that your faith will not rest upon Sophia, the wisdom of man, but upon the power of God. In one minute, I'd like you to lift your hands and thank him for the marvelous miracles. Lives transform destinies. This is what the church is about. The light of the world indeed. Salt of the earth. Ambassadors. Heralding a superior government. And proving the validity of that government here and now. Lord, we thank you. We are not ungrateful. Alive in our midst. Strong in our midst. Hallelujah. And for tonight, I want you to pray. Because the Bible says they go from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. They go from strength to strength. He says, now the Lord is that spirit. There are many kinds of spirits, but don't confuse the one we are talking about. This spirit is the Lord. There are demon spirits. There are unclean spirits. There are all kinds of things. Fallen angels. But he says, now the Lord is that spirit. The spirit we are talking about is the Lord. He says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty liberty this is what i believe this is what he sent us to do and for as long as we're alive we will continue to let the nation see that jesus is alive hallelujah in one minute i'd like you to cry to the lord for a visitation tonight access to wisdom your word is about to come. Is someone praying? Access to superior wisdom. Superior wisdom. Shalabakatoska de Brendege Dabala. Access to superior wisdom. Father, give me an encounter with your word. An encounter that will bring value to my Christian experience. An encounter that will be a, a consolation to my knowing you, my loving you, my serving you.
and I will not be silent I will always worship you as long as I am breathing I will always worship you. One more time And I will, I will not be silent I will always worship you As long as Just two instructions by God and then we'll sit down. While I raise this song, immediately I just saw light. Every time God reveals this kind of thing for me, it is because a season has come. Now listen please, listen. I'm seeing at least 17 people and I want you to hold them. People will start to run out by the Spirit. It is this grace for speed that we talk about. There are people that have come here. God has revealed things to you already. He has told you that this is a season he's shifting you i'm about to declare that word please just bring them out here everywhere i'm seeing that anointing of the spirit of god there are businesses there are individuals there are families there are ministries that have been kept at a level he said moses tell the people that they go forward therefore i declare by the power of the spirit as instructed by god may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now bring them out I decree and declare speed every delay I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and I decree and declare now you will run like Elijah and overtake the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel you will run like Elijah financially spiritually I declare by the voice of prophecy in the name of Jesus, everything holding you down that will not allow you to move forward, I speak to you tonight. Go forward. 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 And every power sitting on your destiny that would not let you move forward. Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, the one who is exalted as Lord and Christ. I command those spirits to give way now. Give way now. Give way now. Over financial destinies. Give way now. Every ministry here represented that will not move forward in their prophetic assignment whether you are a man of god or you are an ordained worker i decree and declare that grace for speed lands upon your destiny now <laughs> hear me there are businesses here that have been grounded i take five years and put it in one month for you by prophecy the achievement of five years may it manifest in one month Please believe it. Don't sit here wondering what is happening. Now the Lord is that spirit. Now the Lord is that spirit. Everything that should have entered your hand, but is being hijacked by powers in the second heavens. I stand by prophecy. This week, between today and next week Sunday, I prophesy may it enter your hand. I may it enter your hand.
every helper of your destiny who has refused to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to birth prophecy over your life. I'm speaking over a family and in the I've been instructed to do this. I decree and declare every helper of your destiny. Hear the word of the Lord from the north, the east, the south, the west. I command them to appear over your destiny. For some of you, while you are in this service seated, the spirit of the living God is going to the helpers of your destiny and compelling men to speak at the gates for you. In the name of Jesus, before you get there, a good report would have gone ahead of you. Hear me. Shame and reproach that has refused to live your life by the God of heaven, let it end here tonight. Let it end the Pakatos Kata. Let it end here tonight. Let it end here tonight. One last prayer, and you'll be seated. This grace for visibility that can expose a man to his world. Can I tell you? Being gifted is powerful, but if that engracing is not upon you, you will remain there with your gift. There is a grace. It's called a hear ye him anointing. The grace that compels your territory not only to know you are there, but to come and place a demand on your grace. I speak to someone here. You have done your due diligence to build. Now is the time to be seen. I stand by the voice of prophecy. May that grace for visibility, let it come on you now. Visibility in business. Visibility in ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town. Who noised it is not our business. It was noised. And any man in fraternity with dark powers, who says over his dead body for you to rise, may his prayer be answered in this service. See, you see, let me tell you this. Please look up. Prophecy is not an announcement. Prophecy is creation. You are not just announcing what should happen. You are making it happen. Consistent with the will of God. There are many dimensions to the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. That supplies you spiritual information. To the end that your faith be built. Right? And then you have hope and the bible says hope does not make ashamed but there is the creative dimension of prophecy it does not just reveal what will happen it makes it happen when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not announcing what would have happened anyway there was no way that would have happened oh like the prophet let me speak over someone's life by this time tomorrow i don't mean prophetic tomorrow literal chronological tomorrow may a testimony that will surprise you come to you Thank you, Jesus, the mighty God. Wave your hands and just give him thanks. Lord, we bless you. When you come, you come like a mighty God that you are. You come to us because you love us. What is man that thou art mindful of? Nor the son of man that thou visitest him. You do this because you have loved us with an everlasting love. 
and even drawn us with your loving kindness thank you and for all those who are out i decree and declare as it has been spoken so let it be for you in the name of jesus christ we establish it by the spirit and we declare that you will stand to testify here can i tell you this there is a way you can make declarations and the devil can thwart it but there is a mystery called the key of david it says i am he that was dead and now is alive revelations one and i hold the keys the key that opens a door that no man can shut there are doors that men can shut there are doors that if shut men can open but there is a kind of key that opens a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open that is dominion please be seated god bless you good evening everybody this is koinonia When the believers were wondering what the power of God was doing, Peter said, this is that. This is that which was prophesied by Joel. That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I appreciate everyone. Thank you for the sacrifice to be here week in, week out. I sense that as I teach tonight, aside from the impartation of wisdom one of the things that we are going to be receiving by the spirit is an engracing to walk in the reality of that which was spoken about it is one thing to have information ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 he says he said unto me son of man stand up upon your feet he had no strength he was given an instruction but he did not have the power to stand verse 2 says and the spirit entered into me when he speak not before when as the word came the spirit came to and he set me upon my feet and i heard him that speak unto me hallelujah praise the name of the lord let me honor and appreciate everyone here Dr. Stanley, thank you. It's good to have you around. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. He came together with a dear, wonderful man of God I just got to meet. Flew in all the way from London just to come for a connection. And marvelous work God is doing in his life. We had a brief conversation and my goodness, very humble, great man, Pastor Brian Jones. God bless you. Please honor him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Stanley. We appreciate you. Thank you for making this happen for him. Every other person, we appreciate you. It is an honor to have you come. It's one thing to be anointed and gifted, but if there is no one to hear you, you are not making your calling and your election show. Hallelujah. It is your responsibility to make your calling and your election show. That means you engage all the principles, including honor that will validate that you are called when you honor people they will come to listen to you when you despise them you will talk to yourself it's a principle that many people have ignored to their detriment please do not take people for granted when god grants you the gift of access to the ears the hearts and the convictions of men is a trust you must protect and guard jealously in as much as God has honored us and in as much as priesthood comes with its own dimension of honor, we must be vocal and unashamed to appreciate the gift of loyalty, the gift of reception. Every time we have the opportunity to communicate the counsel of God and there is someone available to listen, we must not take it for granted. Hallelujah. So thank you for coming. There are not many times that God reveals to me what I should teach directly in visions. I've had these moments. Most times, I logically sit down in partnership with the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of the word 
to come up with the teachings that build the people you see one of the assignments of priesthood if you are a man of god it is your assignment to sit with the spirit of wisdom and the word of god to design a a spiritual growth menu that is supposed to build god's people and to help them attain maturity and stature in the spirit it is not until you have a vision or you have a dream of a sermon god has granted you wisdom every man of god is likened according to jeremiah 3 and verse 15 to a spiritual chef the primary menu being knowledge and understanding so he says i will give you pastors that are after my heart and if so they will feed you so preaching and teaching is feeding hallelujah and it is often said that you become what you eat that means when you have a lopsided people who are not men and women of stature in the spirit their lopsidedness can be traced to the kind of spiritual meal that they may be receiving and it is my commitment as a man of god within the limit of the grace available and the nature of the call the assignment to ensure that week in week out god's people do not come here and sit only to waste their time it is my assignment in partnership with the holy spirit to ensure that for every time you come and sit here to learn god number one you must know him to have an encounter with him number two you must be able to have access to the wisdom that comes through life applicable teachings any dimension of spiritual truth that does not have applicability in your life and in this realm is useless as far as your living is concerned the truths that you know must edify you and must translate themselves into wisdom that improves the quality of your life the quality of your fulfilling your assignment and the quality of the living of others there are many many spiritual information that are useless as far as revealing jesus bringing him glory living a, a, an exceptional life and being a blessing to humanity is concerned you must be careful to edit the things that you learn and know the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness it is for this reason he gave unto some apostles and prophets evangelists teachers pastors for the maturing the perfection of the saints the maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry until all of us come together to the unity of faith the bible says to that perfect man to the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive hallelujah he says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified moments where the word comes is the moment where ignorance is living your life because you see ignorance and light darkness and light cannot coexist john 1 5 the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not so the coming of light is the exiting of darkness the coming of knowledge is the exiting of ignorance hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 says my people even though they are my people they perish why for the lack of knowledge what kind of knowledge number one the knowledge of god because that is eternal life john 17 and verse 3 and this is eternal life that they may know you the one true god and jesus whom you have sent this is eternal life that they may know you not just that they may make a recitation in front of an altar that they may know you so the teachings number one help us to know god to understand his character and his way so that we can become like him it is as we behold him that we are changed just knowing he's around does not change us we must behold him then we are changed and then number two the level of spiritual enlightenment that can help us to reign and excel in life listen to me listen to me 
the kind of Christianity that just limits your growth to knowing God alone without equipping you with the requisite level of spiritual arsenals that makes for your victory is incomplete. It is not just enough to know God. You must be equipped with the spiritual arsenals that makes for your victory. The Bible calls us ambassadors. The Bible calls us kings and priests. Is that true? Revelation 5 and verse 10. That we have been made kings and priests unto God and that we will reign and our domain is the earth. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. Are we together tonight? So more than just knowing God or in addition to knowing God, which remains our ultimate pursuit to know him, Listen to me, every time you come here and every time you listen, connecting around the world, have it at the back of your mind that every meeting is an opportunity again, in addition to knowing God, to be equipped with the spiritual arsenals that makes for your victory an excelling life. John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The Bible says, but I am come. This is why I have come. That ye may have life, and then to have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. And the bridge between prophecy and experience is light, understanding. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Having their understanding darkened. This is what is stopping men from coming into the full potential of that which has been finished in Christ. Having the understanding darkened, it says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Every service is a campaign against ignorance. To drive ignorance with an unbending determination from your life ignorance in every area so you are equipped to number one be a spiritual man number two you are equipped to be a king and priest in experience you are equipped to be a blessing first to yourself and then through you to your world if this is not happening we are not in church it doesn't matter what time and it doesn't matter what day there are defined spiritual activities that must happen in a service for it to be called church just because believers are gathered and jesus is mentioned there does not mean church happened the church as an institution is the only authorized platform where the mind of god and the value system of the kingdom can be communicated it is the most accurate platform where you learn god and learn his ways Every other system outsources their knowledge from the church. The manual for this training is scripture. The course content doctrine. This is how believers grow. Hallelujah. But tonight's teaching is quite unique because um, yesterday we had, by the way, we had a wonderful moment with our family in Zaria all through the weekend. It was quite... A wonderful time um, it's a great blessing to have connected with God's people again just sharing building equipping God's people and the territory once again and I returned we had a wonderful time with our school of ministry students um, we're preparing them for the final phase of their course so that they can write their exams and we look forward to their graduation but then I returned back you know tired stressed out and while I had some time to just rest a little, excuse me, I had a dream. Pay attention, my sermon has started. I had a dream. And in that dream, I was back with the students in class again. We're, we're on the last course now, finance. And when I had a dream, in that dream I was teaching the students, but a strange thing began to happen. Same scenario as it happened in real life. I noticed that the doors to the class just opened and people started coming who were not students of the school of ministry they came and they sat down and I didn't seem bothered in fact I was excited then they came then they came and while they were coming again they were inviting others to come and hear some of them were shouting you know how people shout when they are enjoying themselves in church and people were coming coming and the scene started changing 
to look like the koinonia meeting i knew exactly what god was saying exactly what god was saying that he wanted me to communicate some of these ideas that we were teaching in the class and to bring them here and so in obedience like apostle paul i would not be negligent to this heavenly calling and so tonight join me as we explore the mysteries of the kingdom in a two-part series that i hope to start today and finish next week the power to get wealth part one we are going to be exploring by the spirit the economic system of the kingdom as revealed from scripture as as revealed from the lives of uncommon people men and women who have so labored and paid the price in the kingdom and even extending to the secular environment um, I do not intend to make this unnecessarily comprehensive because I know that we will have a number of um, other teachings and series that will come when you are teaching complicated subjects like this it is wise and better to teach them not only in series but in levels line upon line are we together now yes from from an educational standpoint when you bring too much information for people they may be excited but they may not necessarily be transformed by it so the church is also a place of learning we're in the school of the spirit but i pray in the name of jesus that this that i will share with us tonight will truly truly bless us Amen. hallelujah at the end of it we're going to just make declarations over ourselves now the subject of uh, economy and wealth and finance is is one that is quite a touchy subject as far as the church is concerned because there are usually two schools of thought or two dimensions of approach to it number one we have those who completely ignore the subject of the empowerment of believers all wise but especially in the area of finances because probably they may have received a an understanding from largely well-meaning preachers who may have trivialized the need for economic empowerment in the body in a bid to emphasize other topics like holiness to emphasize other topics like righteousness godliness the love for god and the fear of the lord which is very profitable we may have downplayed on um additionally important subjects like the economic empowerment of the saints the result is what we continue to experience across africa across our nation and sadly even within the church are we together yes then we have the other side of the pendulum men and women who approach the subject of wealth and empowerment financial empowerment as though that is the only thing jesus taught and that imbalance has manufactured all shades of carnality theft insincerity lack of integrity etc they have been a derivative of that imbalance so the entire scope of the believers education from this lopsided standpoint becomes money 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 on a crusade ground money in a discipleship class money even while repenting money everything that has to do money and so you see that there have been two sides of the imbalance and both of them are equally destructive because ignorance will keep you poor and poverty will make you a slave and slavery will frustrate you you will die and sadly it takes you to hell so we have not we are yet to find any profit in approaching life from this standpoint ignoring the blessings that come with being empowered even financially on the other hand there are people who have lost god they have lost everything faith because of this mundane pursuit for money from an unscriptural standpoint and the only reward they get for approaching it this way is sorrow upon sorrow that depresses them then they become the echo of solomon's proclamation vanity upon vanity all is vanity solomon got punished for his foolishness for us to learn 
it says the things that are written aforetime they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope we do not need to make that mistake again the issue is not economic empowerment the issue is the approach so i hope by the spirit of the living god to from first a spiritual standpoint and then leaning on the shoulders of those who have been graced in this area with proven track records i hope that we'll be able to put together principles that will help us it is my belief that at the end of this teaching there will be remarkable transformations and testimonies from the lives of people if this is a deliverance service a proper deliverance service this is not a financial seminar at all this is a deliverance service proverbs 22 from verse 2 we'll read four scriptures and then i'll begin to share a few things are we together proverbs 22 verse 2 ready to read if you're a believer and you love jesus please read as loud as you can one to read the rich and poor meet together One more time. Very dangerous statement that the rich and the poor meet together. Where? On earth. The platform that brings the rich and the poor together is the earth. And then the Bible says something that if you do not understand, it makes God look like an unfair person. He says the Lord is the maker of them. Who are the them? The rich and the poor now listen God did not make them rich or poor God made them men they separated themselves into rich or poor there is no record of God making rich people and poor people from Scripture God made men men now gravitated into different dimensions economically speaking and the Bible says whichever one you choose one fact remains God is the maker of them all. He didn't make them so, he made them all. Verse 7, same scripture, Proverbs 22 and verse 7. This is a very disturbing scripture. Very, very disturbing scripture. Let's try it now, please. One to read. Hmm. Please, one more time. The rich, it didn't say the rich Christian. It didn't say the rich believer. The rich anyone will rule over the poor anyone. And whoever is at the other side of borrowing, the Bible says he will remain servant to the lender. The rich continent will rule over the poor continent. The rich nation will rule over the poor nation. The rich community will rule over the poor community. The rich individual. So there is a relationship between wealth and dominion. Please pay attention. Very instructive statement. Ready for the second one? Proverbs chapter, Psalms 35 and verse 27. Psalms 35. Please let's hurry up so I begin to teach. Again, if we can read, I'll appreciate. Ready? It's projected. One to read. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause yea let them say continually let the lord be magnified with heart pleasure in the prosperity so straight up without any confusion we know according to scripture that god has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. Genesis 17 and verse 6. 17 and 6. 17 and verse 6. Please read it as a prophecy over your life, over your family and all who are under your care. Ready? One to read. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee please say amen. amen can you take a few more scriptures second corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9 apostle paul 
is teaching the church in Corinth. He's putting perspectives to a lot of confusion that was happening at the time with the church in Corinth. It was at a time, theologically speaking, where they were having an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and there was a lot that was going on. So he came to bring apostolic order. The entire theme of Corinthians is that all things be done decently and in order. So he needed to define a lot of things and to put things in perspective. Now he comes to the subject of abundance and here's what he had to say. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Let's read one more. This is a story. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. First and foremost, may it never happen to you. Say amen. amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Because what you are about to read is not a very good story, but it's very, very instructive. Start from verse 13, please. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 13. Just a little with the volume. This wisdom have I seen under the sun and it seemed great unto me what is the wisdom are you ready I'll read and when I desire you to join me I'll just prompt you please do there was a little city look at the story now and a few men within it and there came a great king against that city and he beside that city and he built great bulwarks against it verse 15. Please read with me. One to read. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man. What sort of a description is that? Didn't the mother give him a name? Why didn't the Bible just say he found Joshua or he found David? When the Bible becomes this descriptive, it means God is leading you somewhere. He, there was found in it a poor wise man. Uh -huh. And he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered the same poor man the lesson next verse please keep reading then said i wisdom is better than strength nevertheless a poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not here that's why i said may it never happen to you that if you need a voice to advocate the purposes of God, he's saying that wisdom is powerful, but that when wisdom and poverty goes hand in hand, wisdom will go and leave you poor and your voice will not be heard. Now, please look up. Why has the subject of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom become such a burden? Did you know that I will not be surprised that as I'm teaching this now, there are many of you listening, watching, and following who may be so uncomfortable why is he having to teach about money i mean there are many other spiritual things we need to talk about i agree with you and i sympathize with you that's why god sent me because there has to be a correction of this ideology the lopsidedness the belief that the moment you begin to talk about economy I will tell you why many people have not been serious about the subject of finance from a kingdom standpoint. The reason is because most of them have other people who are paying the price of their ignorance for them, financially speaking. So whether you understand the principles or not, there seems to be someone you can lean on and tap into his own sacrifice. And you see, there is something about pain that is a blessing i was teaching the school of ministry students the prodigal son was not told by the holy spirit to come to himself pain in that place reminded him and the bible says he came to himself there are many people who will not pay attention to their finances because every time god wants to teach them that lesson here comes someone in the guise of compassion and would stop them from seeing the relevance of understanding that subject now the terrible thing is that the moment you get to a point where you become comfortable with poverty and lack and ignorance you are not the only one who will suffer it the average person seated here is connected to at least four people 
if you're a family person you have children nuclear and extended family members all together and can I tell you the kind of trouble that is in our nation today in Africa today is not just a problem with government it's a problem with orientation the, the, there has to be an overhaul of our orientation especially in the church there are many people like I said earlier who talk about money from a carnal standpoint even when they are sleeping when you wave money they will wake up that lost that lost and that drive for it they can kill for money they can do anything for money please do not confuse what I'm teaching tonight that is not at all what I'm talking about number two I am not talking about this marketing of flesh and lust that ignores Jesus just for the pursuit of mundane things to prove points that I am rich I am this that is also not what I'm talking about my communication is from his kingdom standpoint with the understanding that the men and the women who are listening are people who are determined to see Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified if so then we can continue I can't take for granted that all of us are in the same page for many of you I'm not continuing what you have been learning it is a deliverance from what you might have been learning are we together because there are people who God is already dealing with in the area of lust for material things, lust for money. And so chances are that when you hear these kinds of teaching, you become excited because you think it's, it's just giving allowance to that level of carnality. This is at all not what I'm saying. However, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, I would be a wicked man of God to number one in ignore the instruction of the Holy Spirit and then to not capture this reality in your experience how else will you excel in a world that is driven by economy in ignorance no dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the vision to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development Lord, grant me the discipline.